Hello everyone, my name is Saye and welcome to another episode of Saye Sun Studio. This is part two of the look at my garden throughout the seasons and it covers early summer. Part one dealt with spring and I hope you had a chance to look at that because it kind of explains my whole philosophy about what gardening is and how I see the environment and the way my garden can contribute to the health of that environment. And I continue on that theme and I even take a little bit of a chance to explore and uh, share some of the beautiful creatures that I've seen in my garden. So won't you join me on this tour of my early summer garden? Let's go! I'm going to start this tour with a little bit of a controversial choice in Viper's Bug Gloss. I love this plant because even though it's introduced, it's a great source of pollen for bees and they just go crazy for it. Viper's Bug Gloss is a biennial. That means it forms rosettes the first year and produces flower spikes the second year. As the spikes get taller, they start to go to seed and that's when I cut them back in a process called deadheading and this keeps the plant short and blooming all through summer. It's a member of the borage family and its cousin borage is not only a fully edible plant, I mean leaves, stems, flowers, everything, but also a pollinator magnet. That means it will attract pollinators and make your veggie patch even more productive. So it's a great companion plant to add to your garden. Something that is not as edible is this Persian onion. Yes, it's an onion. And you know alliums as the ones that are tall and slender. This one is a very short plant with a very large bloom head. It's almost resembled the fireworks. So I absolutely loved it. And I'm gonna try growing some from seed this year. And then there is sage. Now this one is meadow sage. It's the first of three sages that I grow. And those purple bloom stalks were fantastic. It is native and it has a lot of traditional medicinal values. But the other one that grows for me is the common sage, which this is for my kitchen. And it's great for drying and keeping in your pantry year round. And of course the bees love it. And the third one, Russian sage, is not even Russian. It comes from Central Asia, actually from Pakistan. And it wasn't even considered a sage until 2017. That's when it was reclassified. But it is exquisite and has these fantastic silvery foliage and uh, beautiful, beautiful blooms. And of course, what counts, the bees love it. Plus it's extremely drought tolerant, so you can plant it anywhere and not really worry about maintenance. The hot days of summer are perfect for doing some yard maintenance work. And this year for me, it was cleaning up the pathways. To get rid of all those plants that had taken roots in between the rocks that were difficult to pull, I used this formula for a very non-toxic weed killer. I spray it on the weeds directly and it affects them right until the roots. Now you have to be careful not to use this too often because there is salt buildup. But I use it once every three years and then I just add a little bit of gravel to top off my pathways. Pincushion plant is one of my favorite ground covers. It's, uh, the plant itself is rather low, but it sends up these beautiful purple bloom heads that are quite exquisite to look at. It's native, so the bees love it. And yes, one look at this picture tells you why it's called pincushion. That's exactly what it looks like. And right next to it is my beard tongue. Now this is a hybrid called Husker Red, so it's got these beautiful red stems, but uh, it's great for pollinator gardens and quite delightful. 
Right next to the beer tongue is my Shasta daisy with its beautiful white blooms and bright yellow center. It is a very cheery welcome to summer. And I also have its parent, the ox eye daisy that grows wild among the grass. My blue vervain also grows in that area. And it's a plant with a lot of benefits because you can make tea from the leaves. It's great for pollinators, it's native. But the cutest part is the fact that its uh, blooms look like little sparklers. They kind of start at the bottom and they work their way up. Another beautiful blue uh, flower that blooms around the beginning of July is this bellflower. And did you know that there are bees that are specialized in specific types of flowers? Well, I got to meet one of them and it was this uh, bellflower resin bee. Initially, I thought it was stuck in the bloom, but then I realized it was scraping prime pollen onto its abdomen to take back home to its nest. And I thought, you know what? Why don't I put up together a little reel of my favorite moments in the garden? So here are the amazing things I saw in my garden. Well, okay, we're gonna start off light with just a ladybug. But then it was the sparrow family. Our entire family was glued to the window for 10 days as we watched the birds emerge and then take flight, all within 10 days. It was amazing. And then there was this bunny. Okay, my dog's dream is to chase the bunny, but little did she know the bunny was there always looking at her. She lives in our backyard. And then we got to see this inchworm. And yes, in case you're wondering, it does truly measure an inch at a time. It had places to go, things to do, and was not hanging around to socialize. But probably the most interesting one was, I saw this movement out of the corner of my eye as I was zooming in to take a picture. And no, those are not thorns on the aster branch. They are actually tree hoppers. They were adorable. So I spent a good couple of hours encouraging them to walk for me. So one day I heard this really loud scratching noise in the garden. And when I went to look for it, I found this bee was stripping off all the fibers from this globe thistle leaf. And I found out it's a female European wool carter bee and it gathers these fibers to make its nest. So that was fantastic. and but on another plant, I managed to get a little bit of a video of the bee actually flying off with it. See, it makes a nice package and woof, gone. Now the males actually claim a patch of flowers as their own. They're very territorial and they chase all the other bees away. A little bit of a jerk. But then maybe the most interesting thing I saw were these circular cuts in my red butt tree and whoops what was that that was a leaf cutter bee let me show you how fast it cuts those circles and takes those leaves to make its nest i'll also show you in slow motion because that is a mighty mighty feat it's not just the cutting of that perfect circle but also the fact that it flies off with it. Look at that. Whoa. And this view I think is the best because you can actually see the amazing flight. I have new respect for these bees. And then I saw this clear wing. I'll show you what it looks like in flight. It's probably the most beautiful moth I've seen. Again, it was in my lavender patch, 
which is an extremely fun place to be for all the pollinators. Looks like a little bit of a hummingbird. But in case you're wondering, my garden also has a dark side, and I found out about that when I saw this thick-headed fly. Initially I thought it was so cute, and then I started reading up on it. It actually grabs bumblebees mid-air, lays the egg in their abdomen, and they turn into zombies that dig their nest underground and raise its larvae. Ooh, creepy. And then there's also this guy. It's called an ambush bug. And initially I thought, oh, it's eating something. Turns out they lay in ambush of bees and they can paralyze them. And as I saw one in my globe thistle, this poor bumblebee flew on by and I could just hold my breath and think, oh, what's going to happen? You can see the bug making a move, but hey, this guy had other plans. But not all were so lucky. And I found this fly in one of the globe thistles. And the ants were finishing off whatever was left after the ambush bug ate him. And on another occasion, I was looking at my Russian sage and I found this motionless bee. And then I saw the ambush bug. So there is a bit of a dark side to my garden as well. But let's return to the happy place and um, well, I'll do that by sharing my stone crop collection with you. Now this part of the garden is dedicated to the many varieties of stone crop that I have. They are adorable. Probably the most famous one that you've seen is showy stone crop that gets uh, beautiful flower heads that turn pink in the fall and I even leave it up during winter because it's a great source of seeds for birds and it looks great but they range from these tiny tiny little things to much larger ones and you'll see it there's quite a bit of variety in their leaves and structure and blooms so uh, I love this collection so this tiny little guy is called Swedish stone crop and it is adorable. Those leaves are probably just a millimeter across. This one, tiny towers, really reaches up and it looks quite elegant when it blooms. And there's even a variegated Russian stone crop. So they're native to Europe but extremely drought tolerant and hardy and they don't dry up during winter so they're evergreens as well and it's lovely to have something like that in the garden and of course no summer garden would be complete without milkweed milkweed is a critical part of the survival of the monarch butterflies because it's the only plant the caterpillar will eat when it's developing into a butterfly. And if you wonder why it's called milkweed, hey, look at that. The sap is like milk and it's extremely bitter. And that's what keeps the caterpillar safe because nobody wants to eat it when it's so distasteful. So as the bloom heads developed, hey, I've even got a monarch checking out my patch. Oh, please. Come visit. But there's also other pollinators. This is a native plant and um, it attracts all kinds of different things and soon those blooms turn into seed pots and uh, they're quite stunning. You can use it for flower arrangements. But probably in the next video I'll show you what happens afterwards. Another variety that I have is butterfly wheat. And I don't want to play favorites, but this is my favorite of the, of the milkweeds. The color is just so, so lovely. And it has different shades of orange and yellow. And it attracts beautiful, beautiful pollinators like this pure green sweat bee. And you can see 
the variety of color just on the same plant. And the third one that I have is swamp milkweed, which likes really swampy conditions. I think it's not very happy where I've planted it. I've got to move it to some place more swampy. But it also attracts a lot of monarchs. And it is very beautiful. So with that, my friends, this tour ends. But I actually have the next segment already in the works. So if you liked what you saw, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that bell button so you get a notification when that next segment is coming out. If you live in Canada, you can actually get some of the seeds from the plants you saw at my Etsy shop, so please go take a look. But otherwise, I hope you have a lovely, lovely gardening season, and I'll see you next time. Happy gardening!